creative corner today i'll be featuring the leave a little sparkle stamp set which will be retiring on june 2nd i'm going to be creating three beautiful cards it's going to be a simple card to elaborate card i will also be working on the blueberry bushel card stock and that's one of the in color that's going to be retiring this year june 2nd so this stamp set is a wonderful stamp set for that little girl in your life. It's also good for us big girls too as well, but it's adorable. It could be used for any occasion. So if you're interested in getting this, hop on over to my online store and go ahead and try to get it by June 2nd. So let's go ahead and get creative and start making these cards. So what we're going to need is a strip of paper, and that is in Wistful White. That's measuring two by five and a half inches. And we're going to go ahead and stamp up our sentiment. And the sentiment that we're going to use is leave a little sparkle wherever you go. We're going to stamp up that um, sentiment using the ink pad Pacific Point, which is um, stamping up, one of stamping up blue. And... I use my grid paper to try to get that as straight as possible. And next what we're going to do is bring in our triple banner punch and go ahead and put a tail to the end of that. I'm going to make sure the triple pan banner punch is facing up where I can see and the writing facing up so I don't cut that off. So and we're just going to cut down the edges on that. Then we're going to take that and set it aside and we're going to stamp the unicorn head and we're going to be using our stitched circle dies and with the stitched circle dies they come with circles i should say stitch shapes so they come with circles ovals and squares so we're going to be using the second to largest um, stitch um, circle die and we're going to get um, cut out three of those for all three of our cards we're going to go ahead and stamp up the unicorn head on each one of those typically i like to just stamp it off on the regular cardstock first before i um, cut it out with the dies that way you could get it nice and even and if you make any mistakes um, you could just re-ink that for camera's sake i went ahead and did the opposite and cut out the dies first and then stamp the images on I'm going to put some stars and we're going to use the same color ink. We're just pretty much using one ink, guys. And we're going to stamp those stars to the right hand corner of the unicorn head. And with those, what we're going to do is pop them up on, well, with some dimensionals. So we're going to get the base of our cardstock. And all the cardstock are measuring the same 11 by 4 and a quarter, scored at 5 and a half. So we're going to go ahead and get our multi-purpose glue, guys. And the multi-purpose glue is good to use because you have time to move that around and it doesn't dry as quickly. So it's a little forgiven. So you're going to put uh, 10 strips of glue just around the edges, some there in the middle of it. And then I'm going to stick that onto the base of our card right up to the edge. I'm going to leave some of the glue out to the left-hand side and line that up as straight as I can. So once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take our stitch um, circle and we're gonna pop that up with using some dimensionals. And this is a nice, quick, and easy card. It's clean and simple, and I just love it. I just love the blue and the white together. So we're gonna add four dimensionals, take out my nails and indent those so the backing could be a little bit easier to take off. And usually I don't put any insert in the inside of my card, but if you put an insert, you could measure at Whisper White, you could have that measurement at four and one eight by five and three eighths. I usually keep the inside of my cards blank since I make so many and if for whenever the occasion arise I would go ahead and um, create uh, um, insert specifically for that occasion okay we'll be stepping up a little bit with our second card and with this card right here we're going to be using 
um, in color designer series paper. Those in colors is for 2019 to 2021. Every year, Stampin' Up revamped their colors and they put in five new fresh colors, guys. And so that's how they keep things going and not keep it dull. So these in colors that I would be using on this is you get six by six is 40 sheets for each of two double sided designs in the five in colors. And those five in colors you see here, we have terracotta, um, no, pretty peacock you, you have there to the top. And then we're going to go with the um, Rococo Rose. And then we have, next is the Purple Posy. And then Terracotta Tile. And then we have the Seaside Spray. And that's the one that I'll be using with um, creating my um, cards today. So on that designer series paper, they, I'm using the Gingham. Um, design and that piece is cut at two by four and a quarter. So we're going to go ahead and add your multi purpose glue to that, and we're going to stick that onto the front of our card. And once I open it up, I could see better on you know making sure that is straight and the edges are even. Then we're going to go ahead and get our, um, well, we're going to emboss with this, guys. So we're going to use our embossing buddy. And this embossing buddy is retiring, too, as well. I'm not quite sure why, but this is a great tool to help decrease the static when you're embossing. So I'll be embossing with the white embossing powder. So I am going to get my embossing ink. And that is Versamark. And I'm going to be using the sentiment, make your dreams come true. Okay. And we're going to do that, as I said, in the white embossing powder. And I use the coffee filter. To, and it's easy for me, once I use the coffee filter, I could just bend that and put all the powder back into the jar. And that's easy storage for me, the smaller jars. And we're going to go ahead and heat emboss. And I'm not sure if you could see it, but that powder melts into a nice shiny white color. Sometimes they have your paper a little wonky, if you notice there. So what you could do to prevent that is that you could put a top layer on top and glue it down so that could prevent that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pop up our stitch circle. And I am also going to use some sprigs, and those sprigs is from the Nature's Tart Dyes. And um, that comes with a stamp set called Positive Tart, so it's a pretty cool stamp set. And then that's one of our newer stamp sets, so if you're interested in getting that. That is not retiring. So we're going to go ahead and pop that stitch circle up with some dimensionals. And then we're going to get some glue dots and we're going to put the sprigs right underneath that. And you, once you use four dimensional, you have enough room to just stick the um, sprigs right underneath there. So I'm just going to use glue dots to the tail end of those sprigs, and I'm going to have the rest of it loose. So if you want, you could tack those down with, with your multi-purpose glue or add some um, more glue dot to the leaves, but I just let them. I want a little dimension, so I didn't glue, tack those down. And this, guys, is pretty much a, another simple card with just blue and white nice and clean and that's it for our second card so it's just um ramped up a little bit with just some simple little basic stuff you could add bling if you want but i just think it's nice clean and simple and it don't need anything else to that so we're going to be moving on to our third card and this is a little bit more complex and is great for a technique a different technique so it's a floating card and I'm going to tell you here how we go ahead and cut this. So like I said, they're all 
11 by 4 and a quarter and it's scored at 5 and a half. So we're going to take our bone fold and make that crease nice and crisp. We're going to get our trimmer out and you see where it's folded at five and a half. So you just want to work with half of the one side, just a five and a half. And we want to take off um, three and a half off of that five and a half. So we want to bring it down to two inches. So you're going to put that right, the bottom of that card right to three and a half. And then you're going to go ahead and cut that off. So that's going to give you three, I mean, two inches there to the top of your card. And then we'll show you what we'll do with the remainder of that. So once we get that two inches and that card, we're going to take the leftover piece and then we're going to cut two inches off of that three and a half piece. Okay, so once we get that two inches, we're going to get our designer series paper, and um, that is in a seaside um, spray, and I'm going to be using um, the script in that. And those are cut, let me tell you what those are cut at. Those are cut at one and seven eighths by four and one eighths. You just want a little edge of the... Um, blueberry bushel to be peeking through. So you want to make sure your script is in the right direction. And when you cut in and you have these designer strip, um, so like this um, script, you want to make sure that they're in the right directions when you cut and before you cut so you don't waste any paper at all. So we're going to start off and glue that down to the edge. And I start out to the edge, make sure the sides and the tops are even before I place it all the way down. And then we're going to do the same for the top. And like I said, I try to open my cards because it's kind of easier for me to see to make sure that it's even to that top edge. And so the bottom of the, the piece that's loose, we're not going to stick it to the bottom of the card. We're going to take the um, stitch oval, I mean the stitch circle, and we're going to have two of, I'm um, going to use the scallop. The layering circle, so we have the scallop, we're gonna do the second to the largest and the third, uh, the second to the largest, we're gonna have two of the second to the largest scallops. So we're gonna put the stitch circle and the scallop together. And the other one we're gonna save for the back to make our card look finished. So once we have that together, you could, you try to not get any glue to the back of your card where you put your inserts, okay? So we're just going to put a little bit of glue to the top and to the bottom of that stitch circle die with the unicorn head. So pr to prevent any glue from getting to the back, I'm going to put that scallop, that extra scallop to the back there so it could pick up any glue that spills out from that top one. You could also use your silicone mat, but it's kind of bulky. So we put that there for protection, and then we'll get our multi-purpose glue. So if you want, you could use dimensional. I think I like this better. And then you're going to just stick that on to the top and then the bottom. So that's what's going to give you the appearance of a floating card. So we make sure that's nice and even, then the unicorn is straight. And then see a little bit of glue got on, but it's only on the scallop edge. So we're going to take that and stick it onto the back of that. So make the inside of our card looks finished. So we're going to make sure, make sure those scallop edges are nice and even. And there you have your floating card, guys. And it's just for us to decorate the front. Of that so I'm gonna take from the stitch so sweetly dies the very small piece to stamp our sentiment and I'm gonna stamp believe on that and like I say I usually would stamp first and then cut the die out afterwards but for 
the purpose of camera, I went ahead and did it ahead of time. So I'm just showing you that I stamp the image first down on a scrap piece of card, and then I'll put the um, die over that to make sure my wording is centered. And then you'll run that through your um, cutting machine. So once we have that, we're going to pop that up on dimensional. And I just use the regular size dimensional. So if you want, you could use the mini dimensionals. And we're just going to center that right underneath our unicorn. Next up, we'll be using some ribbon, and this ribbon is called Crinkled Seam Binding Ribbon. It's nice and soft. I just love this ribbon, and you could always dye a white ribbon. So once you get it placed, I like to place it to make sure you don't cover your sentiment. You just cut your tail, and I cut those in a slant. Then we're going to be using a glue dot to put that in place. And I make sure my ears are just not too big. So once we get that ribbon where we need it to go, we're going to go ahead and um, create the inside or give suggestions for the inserts. For the inserts now, you could use the same inserts that we used before, 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 3 8. Or you could create a design to match the outside of the floating card. You let me know down in the comment which one you prefer. So now for the inside of the floating card, we have two strips of paper and then we have a scallop circle. The scallop circle is the third to the from the largest scallop circle and Two pieces of whisper white strip of paper is measuring one and seven eight by four and one eight. So we're gonna go ahead and um, put those in right to the back. So we're making that scallop circle just a little smaller than the blue scallop circle, so you don't show. I don't want any of the white showing from the outside when you layer those up down. So when you put your strip of paper, you're going to have a little bit of blue around the edges and you put your scallop right down in the middle. You close that down. So it'll be mimicking the outside of your card. And there you have it, guys. Tell me which one you prefer. If you missed the deadline for my class by mail for this month, which ended yesterday, you have the opportunity to catch next month so stay tuned for that if you have not already done so please subscribe and also hit the bell icon next to the subscription button so you'll be notified when i have new um, videos thank you guys again for tuning in until next time this is claudette